Oh, hey guys, Will here. I just took a left turn. Uh, instead of doing some robot painting this week, we're going to do a little bit of ZBrush uh, 101. I wanted to uh, kind of recap my ZBrush Summit that I had a couple of weeks ago. Um, you can uh, check out that video in the links below. Um, but um, I covered a lot of ground in that one hour video and I wanted to get more specific with um, some of the tools that I used to do some of the things that was in that video. I would show the, these robot heads and different robots that I had designed uh, using all the tools inside of ZBrush. So really what I want to do is kind of show you how I go from sphere, carve the sphere up and start getting some um, designs out of the sphere and then we'll start refining those parts and then I'm going to cover some of the tools that I use specifically for 3D printing, show you how to shell out the object and then also to slice it so that you can uh, lay it flat on a print bed to print with it. If this is successful and you want to see more of these, I can create uh, a whole series based around using ZBrush for robotics or, or anything, even props as well. So let's get started and see what we can make. I turn the sphere into a Dynamesh and then I start using um, clip brushes to kind of clip away, kind of like clay. Start looking for a form. If I see something that I like, then I start refining that form a little bit, as you can see here. And I start liking the shapes that I see, then I'll take the pinch tool and I'll start pinching some of those edges together to kind of give me some soft S curves. I'm gonna start refining it and adding some parts to the visor. And then we'll start talking about some of the other tools and things that I use to quickly break in some surface changes. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see some shapes coming out of here. I think that might be pretty neat to, to follow a little bit further, but certainly this is all pinch tool here and um, carving in a little bit here and there and just kind of looking for different interesting shapes. The whole concept here was to have kind of like a single eye or a, a kind of a visor eye across the front here. So once, it, once you see the piece go on the whole shape, then it kind of looks uh, even more interesting. And so down here, want to cover this and this is called an IMM which is insert multi mesh so as an example here I have uh, several libraries that I've created with um, various parts in them and you can utilize these parts uh, in your build so each one of these is a single folder that contains different uh, parts so what I've done here is I've grabbed uh, a couple of parts that I've like let's open up this one so here, let's drag this down. So here are all these different uh, parts that someone else has sculpted and you can utilize these parts in your models. You just grab a part, whatever one you're thinking about, make sure you have X on, which gives you symmetry. We can just simply click and drag it out. And then if you wanna kind of take a look at um, other parts, just click on it. Now I can look at all these other parts and see if something rings my bell. Um, I'm gonna use split unmasked points. What that will do is split this object into a, another layer over here. So if I split my unmasked points, then my ears are now over here. So then what I did was I put a couple of little uh, insert multi-mesh parts here and here, and then these little parts go on the tips. One of the things I use when I'm doing uh, design work is the B radius. And if you hold the control and the shift down, this puts you up into your choices of um, your clip brushes or your selection brushes or your trim brushes. And I usually use a uh, clip curve. And um, so now if I hit control and shift and hold down the space bar, you can see this comes up as polygroup, uh, unclip and B radius. What we're concerned with here is B radius and B radius will give us kind of an inset on our object. So we're gonna click B radius. And this is based on the size of your brush so you want to make sure that your brush is um, the size of the inset that you want to make. So here, 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 and here. Let's just for the fun of it. Okay, so that very quickly created an inset. And basically what it, you can see what it's doing, it's actually pulling the back of the head in and creating kind of a line uh, where we created our uh, clip curve line. 
So you can do that over and over again. I have a tendency to kind of like do it multiple times just to kind of like create different kinds of insets. And then you can see very quickly you get some really cool hard surface edged designs. So that's called B radius. You can just keep going on and on forever. So we're gonna undo those to bring it back out again. Let's talk a little bit about um, something called live booleans. It's right here next to the edit and the draw buttons. So let's say instead of this ear coming out, we wanted something to go in. Let's just use this part since we already have it. And we're just gonna take that part and we're gonna move it and we're gonna spin it so that it's facing the other direction like that. Now imagine if this part was clay, we're literally going to push this in and, and it would create like an imprint on the inside. The object underneath is above the object that you want to subtract. And then you're going to hit the um, subtract button right here. So this is add, subtract, difference. And we're going to do the subtract. Hit live booleans. Now you can see, let's get in here a little bit so we can look what's happening. Let's change that to a different surface um, so we can, a lighter surface so we can see what's happening here a little bit better. I can adjust how, how deep that object is penetrating by just moving the object in and out of the surface. One of the other things I want to talk about is um, using alphas to pull in some detail. Um, again, this would happen towards the close to the end of your design uh, process. Um, but I have, again, same kind of thing, uh, libraries of different alphas that I've um, collected. I'm left clicking and dragging to create these shapes. So these are great to kind of go around the edges when you're building, building out different shapes. Um, we can go up and change it, get us a different one. We can do shapes like this. And if I do one shape and we go in, you can see it doesn't hold up because if we turn on our polyframe, you can see there's not enough polygons to hold that detail up. So the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, panel lines. And you can find that by going to, um, you're going to your brushes and then you're going to hit chisel, chisel brushes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I believe in there that are pre-made. You can again, make your own. And what this does is allows you to create uh, like two pieces of plastic, two panel lines coming together. Um, you can just uh, click and drag on it. So that's one. You can also try a different one. Each one gives kind of a different look. And then you get into some double-sided kind of guys, which are deep in the middle. So each one does something a little different when it just depends on what kind of look you're going for. Let's talk about panel loops. Panel loops do the same as the chisel brushes, um, except they actually physically make a panel that's separate from the rest of your model. So to do that, we're going to um, we're going to go Control Shift, and we're going to come up, and we're going to choose Slice Curve. The Slice Curve will um, carve our model into poly groups, and the panels will be based on those poly groups. So we'll just do one panel to start with. So now we have a separate poly group here. We turn off polyframes so we don't have to look at it. Now we're gonna go to, to geometry tab, down to panel loops, and boom, you've got a panel loop that goes all the way around your model just right where you put that line out. It's just that easy. It's important that when you do your bevel profile that you kind of, um, this imaginary non-existing line, <laughs> which is slightly below here. Um, how do I describe this? It's 
this is slightly less than half and this is showing us a profile of the edge of this panel. So to make sure that there's some penetration so when we dynamesh this we still want this line to stay there but we want to make sure that the model is watertight so that inside it is a completely sealed off entity. Otherwise when you go to 3D print this would be a separate part and that would be a separate part and they would just fall apart during the printing process. To prove my point I'm going to undo this and make sure we're still with our line. Yep, still got our line there. And now we have this over top and we're going to hit panel loops. Okay, so now if I go in to take a look at the inside of our model, you can see if I zoom in close, oops, if you can see there's definitely uh, penetration here between the top bevel and the bottom bevel. So when we dynamesh, there won't be any kind of interior surface. Next thing we're going to do is shell the model, make a hole in the bottom so we can also see how thick our shell is. So I always take uh, just a primitive and they're going to penetrate the model by pushing this up inside. And then I'm going to split the unmasked points and then I have the um, cylinder the subtractive. Now we're going to join those back together by merging down. Sorry, we're going to go to geometry tab and then we're going to go to uh, Dynamesh and right here is create shell and this is the thickness. My experience has been this thickness is arbitrary, doesn't mean anything. It can be based on the size of your model, um, the size of the Dynamesh inside the model. So we're going to start with uh, maybe eight and then I'm going to hit create shell and that should subtract this cylinder and create an internal surface for us. So let's see what happens. So now we have an interior surface. It looks like it's about uh, a couple of millimeters thick, which should be plenty. So inside here, you can see the surface is really rough. That's really rough because uh, the way the process uh, ZBrush processes this, uh, this could be a problem if you're resin printing. Actually, this can create a lot of extra uh, resin usage. And also, if you're using um, FDM printer, the FDM printer supports could actually get stuck to this surface. So luckily, it's a separate poly group. So what we can do is select that poly group, and we can clean it up a little bit by smoothing it out on the inside. That will help us a lot. So the best way to do that is to, um, we're going to go and do our selection and go to draw and click. And this is the interior surface. So you can see it's quite chunky and that's not gonna help anybody. So you can do a couple things. You can just um, hit your uh, smooth button and hit it, hold down the shift key, make a big brush and just start doing something like this. So you can just uh, smooth this out. Control shift and click to bring back the outside of the model. Now, if we look inside, we can see in here that it's smooth and that uh, will make all of our printers happy. Now, let's say we wanted to throw this out on a printer. The next thing we need to do is now we need to make that interior uh, not a separate part, but we want it to all be uh, the same poly group. So we're going to hit um, group visible and that's going to, I know, I know it doesn't look the same color, but it is the same color as the exterior, which is really important for this next part. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to slice this and make this into two separate halves that we can put uh, on a 3D printer. And to do that, we're going to um, turn on uh, Dynamesh groups, which is really super important. And then we're going to go up and we're going to choose um, we're going to choose slice curve. There's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just wherever you think is the right place to, to 3D print things so that they will uh, print correctly. Uh, there's lots of different ways you could do it. So you could literally go at an angle like this or you can just go straight up and down and have two parts that are printing. Remember that this flat edge is going to be the bed of the 3D printer. For this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and do it straight up and down just so we have two separate uh, parts or almost straight up and down, something like this. So when I let go of that, we look at our poly lines, we now have, I know it's hard to see because they're very similar in color, but there is a line here that you can see down through the center. 
So with that selected and with Dynamesh and groups on, we're now going to Dynamesh. Now you can see there's a little bit of a line here. Now with any luck, we're gonna click on the back half and we're just gonna move it out of the way. And now we look and boom. Now we have two pieces that we can lay flat on the printing bed. Now using all the tools that I just showed you, I'm gonna finish up this concept and we'll call it done. If you'd like to see more of these videos, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to help me out on the channel, please hit the subscribe and the like button. And that's it for this video. See you next time.